Hi everybody, my name is Kanwar Singh. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Lifelong Medical Care. And just to give you a little perspective, Lifelong Medical Care is, a, is an FQHC, which is a federally qualified health center up in Berkeley. And, um, and as you know, what federally qualified health centers do is we serve people unconditionally. That means they can walk in, we serve them. But yet, we have a, we have a mission-driven model, but yet, at the end of the day, we have billings to do, we've got to collect money to make sure that we are financially sustainable. Thank you. Thank you, Kanwar. Uh, Sandeep Sani, for me, it's such a surreal moment. I started using Tableau back in 2009, so 10 years, uh, a geek. Uh, I attended my first Tableau back, I guess, in 2011. That was Tableau 7. It was such a huge ride probably one of the best events I have ever attended. And by the way, I've attended probably more than 100 different uh, conferences all over the country. But I had never thought in 2010 or 11 that I'll be standing over here with Dr. Barry and with my colleague here, Dr. Uh, Mr. Kanwar Singh. So I'm really honored to be here. Thank you so much. Let me go quickly over the agenda, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick little demo so you can have some background some dashboards and things like that. And then we're going to make it very interactive. For any of you who have friends who've gone to medical school, you know we use the Socratic method, it means that I just come in and ask you questions, whether you like it or not. So whether you whether you want to ask a question or not and have an idea, just remember I'm going to be roaming around to try to get you some ideas. So having said that, I'm going to leave it to my colleagues to do their presentation, and I'm going to exit off the stage so you can focus on them. So thank you, Dr. Berry. So I'll probably, I'll go first. Is that okay with you? Yes, okay. So guys, I'm a CFO and I don't make my decisions easy. CFO is always concerned about money, spending, yet we got to spend it wisely. So basically we make a decision whether we want to build it or buy it. So there are certain things we can build and the others we can buy. In this case, we had a f interesting situation. I had been using uh, so first of all, we have to establish the need. So how do you establish a need? We had been um, doing like um, dashboards for many years using Excel, other tools. Um, finally, we realized that we need something better than that. We need something that can be used at different levels, a better tool. And that's when I was approached by uh, Sandeep here. Uh, actually, you are stealing a thunder. So I distinctly remember the meeting we had almost like two and a half years ago. So I, I had been working with Convert for almost like a year, year and a half already, and we were supporting them on multiple different fronts. And uh, so this is scheduled meeting. I go out to see him in his office, and he comes out of this meeting, and he's really upset. And I said, like, what happened, Convert? Like, this is not you. You are always smiling and, you know, always full of energy. Like, what happened to you? And he said, you know what, I just came out of this meeting and uh, uh, so first of all, the, the way I feel about the organization is I'm flying this 737 and by the way, not the 737 MAX, just the 737 because we don't want to be on the MAX. So I'm flying this jet and I'm flying without any gauges. I don't know, I don't have an altimeter, I don't know which direction I'm going. I get these reports which are probably a month later so I've already landed my plane on the tarmac and now the you know the number comes out like oh by the way uh, 30 days ago you were flying 30,000 miles and going at you know 600 miles an hour and uh, this particular meeting I remember distinctly is that uh, Kanwar had a meeting with a uh, provider, so they were selling a SaaS solution, and it was like high six figures, and it was, you know, which is going to be paid year after year after year. And I said like, Kanwar, like, if I were you, I'll be equally mad too. So why don't we jump in and we solve it together? And that was like a aha moment for us to do it together. I had no idea about RCM, I didn't know what RevCycle is. Kanwar knew everything about it, but the question was how do we Move, make that you know information from convert into the delivery team. So thank you. So going on. So one of the factors that I had looked into when I was engaging Crazy T is that we got to engage, we got to deliver the product, and then disengage and make the product self-sustainable within my organization to be to be carried on. And you know we have the dashboards. 
Now, going to the dashboards, and I can go and take a deep dive. So dashboards are needed at different levels. There's an executive leadership. In a clinical setting, they're needed at the executive leadership. They're needed at the site level, where the clinic managers and the AMDs need the dashboards. Then we have the back end, the billers, the all the folks who are working on collecting the claims. So the executive dashboard, I'll try to cover these briefly so that you can see what we kind of got out of the, uh, the partnership. So I would like to focus on the, um, the visit dashboard first. Okay, thank you. So we wanted to see how our visits, which is our patient visits, by the way, we are still in a fee-for-service environment and moving into a managed care environment. Fee-for-service environment, where we build the patients, we get paid. Managed care, we take on lives and we cover those lives and we get paid a fixed amount. So simple, you know, explanation. So in the, in the fee-for-service environment, our bread and butter is the visits from the Medicaid, Medicare, other insurances. And as you see on this dashboard, we could very well visually see what our Medi-Cal, what happened? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, folks. You cannot. There's some technical snafu here. Um, we can go to the presentation. Maybe we can go back to that. So would you mind putting on the slides? I think the, t the computer is not connected. Thank you. I'm sure some of you have had this problem. <laughs> that, uh, Going back to this. Uh, it never happens, right? <laughs> Particularly when you do a WebEx, correct? Yeah, that's How that's many good. of you have ever had a WebEx actually work? Like three times in a row? <laughs> they have the most amazing story. I was at a part of a presentation about a month and a half ago. We were doing it at the Harvard Club in New York City. You know some killing time. And um, we had the whole event went for three and a half hours and there wasn't one problem All right. with AV or the audio. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this is As I said. A lovely dashboard here. So this is a dashboard which gives us a very um, snapshot of what our visits are like, the Medi-Cal, Medicare, commercial and other payers. And you can see by the the visits by financial class and how they are compared to budget. If we are looking at uh, zeroing down on Medi-Cal, we can see how the Medi-Cal visits are performing to, uh, compared to budget. Then, and also we can see the, how they are over, as far as, now the second thing that we want to look at is the ADV trend, which is the average daily visits. So this was the dashboard for the, let's say the executive leadership, and there are multiple dashboards, I will, we can't go through all of them. And this was like an ADV trend. The providers want to see how many average daily visits were used, and how did they compare over the month. So simply that dashboard, um, then we can go into the revenue cycle uh, charge, the denial management dashboard, which is for the back end. In the denial dashboard, we basically look at how the claims were denied. What was the reasons? The reasons codes are there. So we have very good uh, denial management dashboard and they are clickable. Basically, you can click on any of the categories and then there is another background uh, where you can actually click the, those categories and take it to the actual billers and tell them to collect those claims. So it's basically, you know what, this is making the whole the, the Tableau was able to take our ERM uh, the the uh, the EHR systems like the next gen or let's say the uh, ECWs or Epics of the world and gives a platform where you can actually look at these dashboards more visually, click on them and get stuff done. So that was another. Uh, so this is simply the dashboards that we used and were. Visity was able to build for us. Thank you.
And um, since then, actually, I just want to let you know that we have taken them on and we are continuing to make, make sure that they are sustainable. I mean, right now, uh, Grizzly is not actively involved in these dashboards, but they built it for us, they gave it to us, and we are continuing them. Thank you. Thank you, Kanwar. So, uh, could you please uh, help our audience think about how did, what was your decision cycle? Like, how did you decide to work with Graziti? I'm sure like you deal with lots of vendors. So what is the Graziti difference in your opinion? You know, a couple of things. One is that um, we always want to make sure that the organization that we are working with, whether it's local or international, is HIPAA compliant. So I wanted to make sure that the HIPAA certification is in place uh, because we are dealing with PHI, patient health information, which is protected. And then we also wanted to make sure that what is the engagement going to look like? How is it going to interact? How is how are folks at the analytic, our internal folks going to be able to talk to them on a regular basis? And we were able to actually get them, they were available anytime during the day. It was probably 12 at night in India and we were still able to catch them and get the stuff done. Right. Could you please also talk about you know the knowledge transfer because you knew everything about your world you you live in rev cycle right but for us we are coming as an outsider so if you could help us understand how was that process like for i, I still distinctly remember our going back to our first meeting so what i had asked convert was all i need is a promise that you're gonna spend 30 minutes a week Yes. Helping us, you know, understand and give feedback. So if you could uh, help us understand a little bit on the process side. So, thank, so, so this is really important. So we all have got our, other, our, our regular duties. I mean, I have other things happening in my uh, work, at my work. We are doing strategic in, uh, endeavors. We are building clinics. We are looking at our uh, client population, other, many other things. So I told him very clearly that I have so much time to devote on this. Then what we found very interesting was their folks, wherever they were, they were able to catch on to the healthcare system, healthcare arena very fast and build it. So basically I said, if you ask me the same question twice, I have a problem. And fortunately, you know, there were not too many back and forth here. <laughs> Thank you. So one of the, uh, so if I speak from my experience, um, first of all, coming into the healthcare world, and really understanding the lingo and whatnot. So one of the uh, things that we struggled early on, that lifelong over a period of time, they had growth with acquisition. So they purchased lots of different healthcare systems throughout uh, East Bay, uh, California. And some of those uh, clinics, they were on ECW, e Clinical Works, and some of them were on the next gen. And a patient could be living in one geography and working in another one. So for their dental needs, they will go into one clinic and then for their mental health or some other issue, they will go into another one. And some of the things we had to really deal with was the identity of the patient. So how do we make these systems talk to one another? How do we identify uniquely who this patient is? How many encounters? And then we had to report all these up for all the UDS reports and whatnot other than just the RCM. So it was quite a bit of learning curve but with Converse Hub, we were able to crack that up fairly quickly and add value right off the bat. Yeah, so this is really critical in our healthcare system. We have, when we have multiple systems, we have uh, eClinical Works, as you mentioned, NextGen, and we might have Epic. We are moving on to Epic now. So when you have these three, four systems, and here is the person who's supposed to report these visits, these uh, charges, uh, how did we do last month, uh, how did our providers do, how do we get it all together? So Tableau and Grizzly really provided the platform to put it all together. And if um, some of the folks here got to see another presentation that happened a, uh, a while back, or maybe is happening now, is about clinical measures. And those are also very much needed these days because as we move, to, move into the managed care environment, clinical measures really define how we are doing and how we're gonna be paid and which is, also now something that we were able to uh, do now ourselves, but Grizzidi was able to help us in developing those. Thank you, maybe I'll ask one more question. What's your vision? Where do you see the healthcare headed 
and specifically in FQHC and lifelong in particular. That's a difficult one. Oh, okay. Using data. <laughs> right, Dr. Barry? So, <laughs> I think everybody should have healthcare available. Every, uh, healthcare should be a right and not something that you should be fighting for. We believe at lifelong that folks, whether insured, uninsured, should be able to walk in and get that care. The unconditional care, as we said. Now, how do we achieve that? If we make our system inefficient, our providers become inefficient, our visits are taking an hour, it is not going to help us. How? We got to function just like the Kaisers of the world or any fast growing like uh, private practices. What it does is it gives our providers an extra time to see this patient who doesn't have care. So that's where I see the healthcare, as I said, it should be a right. And secondly, I see that we need to be get efficient to be able to serve people who are not being covered. Thank you. No, uh, I think uh, that's a topic that I 100% agree with the uh, convert here. So somehow in our system, there is so much inefficiency and data is the only way we can make, break all those barriers, mm -hmm. make healthcare universally, like we can debate uh, whether we're going to have Medicare for all or, you know, how we're going to pay where that 52 trillion will come from. But that number doesn't have to be a 52 trillion. We can do so much as data practitioners to really break the walls and make this information self-serve. You don't have to go to doctor for everything. There are so many other ways we can actually make this technologies almost ubiquitous in their day-to-day -day life. And that's where our partners at Tableau come into picture. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'll uh, have a request Dr. Barry. Back on the stage, please. <laughs> I just want to bring up one more, one quick point. We talk a lot about how much healthcare costs, right? Let's think of all the other things in our life. When we buy a car, what do we talk about? We, we think about how much it costs, but we think about what value we get from the money we spend on it, don't we? But we don't think about healthcare that way. All we think about healthcare is cost. Access, cost, quality, patient safety, all the things. But we really think about cost. Instead of thinking about cost, let's think about what the value we get. And then when we're not getting the value, that means we're overpaying, like we would with any other product, right? So if we can improve the quality, improve the safety, improve the outcomes, maybe we won't mind how much it costs. But right now, we spend a lot of money, and for a lot of people, 14 million people uninsured, they don't get much value for even the dollars that they spend, and those people who are kind of underinsured, they also suffer a little bit. But let me ask you some questions. Yes, sir. You're a subject matter expert, right? You understand um, patient visits, um, issues around different types of reimbursement systems, all of that stuff, right? Are you a data doctor? I know a lot of, are you a data doctor? Do you know a lot about Tableau? Did you, you know what? dashboards? Probably not, right? No, I just Thank want to you. see the nice graphs and charts which give me the information. This is a very nice, again, chart about vacuity and stuff, but yeah. And you? Yes, sir. How much do you know about different models for reimbursement? A little bit. Very little. Okay. So, could you imagine if he went ahead and tried to create Tableau dashboards, what would we get? Nothing that looks like that. And if he was supposed to create Tableau dashboards for him, <laughs> they would look nothing like that either. And even worse, if they asked me to do it, it would look worse for either the two of them ever. The key thing here was the two of them got together, exchanged information with each other so that his expertise, Sadiq's expertise, came together and created a valuable dashboard. How many of you are subject matter experts in your organization or are you data analysts? Let's first see subject matter experts. Who's subject matter expert here? You are. All right. Let's see, what are you a subject matter expert in? Negotiations. Contracting negotiations. North Waha. North Waha. I work with a lot of people. 
finance or the department? What kind of what kind of data people? Who creates your dashboards? Uh, analysts in our financial department create most of the dashboards. How do you collaborate? How do we collaborate? Um, I mean, a lot of communication. I mean, communication is key. Um, if we're not meeting, telling people what we want, what we're looking for, then they wouldn't know what to create. Thank you. Who's a data analyst here? Anyone? We got one data analyst in this whole group. What are the rest of you, skiers? <laughs> the skiing conference is down the street over at the uh, man, at the, um, the Luxor. You're in the wrong place. And you can go in the gondola at the Venetian if you want, too. All right. You're a data analyst, right? Yes. Very good. Arthur, so what for Allegheny Health Board? And who do you work with as subject matter experts in your organization? We have uh, applications, application people, analysts, my coworkers. Who is this subject matter expert that tells you, instructs you how to create dashboards, gives you the knowledge? Your, who's your customers? Customers are usually the managers or the physicians. Physicians? And how do they educate you? They tell us what their workflow is, what their preferred outcome is, like a CSM measures, that we try to make it presentable using the digestible format. How much healthcare background did you have before you had this job? Not much. How, how much do you know about healthcare today that you didn't know when you first started the job? It's a slowly, step-by-step step process. And all the newbies that come into your organization, you obviously know a lot more than they do about healthcare, don't you? Um, you know, there's some people that know a lot, some people know nothing, and I'm like the stuff in between. So there's these puzzles, that's why communication is so important between people who wouldn't even interact with each other on a day to day basis. So, you know what we have here? We have a data analyst who now knows about healthcare. A little bit, but a little bit is better than nothing, right? So, what we're describing here is arrangement where you have a subject matter expert who connects with the data analyst to produce dashboards. So what I'd like to suggest to you what you saw today, okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute, but what you saw today is that if you create a dashboard in a vacuum without your subject matter expert, the dashboard you create is not going to be very useful. You cannot develop it in a silo. And if you're a subject matter expert, if you know nothing about data visualization, Nothing about products like Tableau. You'll never be able to get the type of visualization and dashboard and storytelling that you need. So you know what? All of you gotta kinda of gotta to get together and give each other a hug because in order to be effective in dashboard development, you have to do what they have done, which was you had a subject matter expert work together with a data visualization expert to create the dashboard. So I, what I want you to do is I want you to tell me a little bit about the iteration, the process of iteration, and the education transfer that went on between the two of you to create the dashboard that was so valuable to the organization. So you know, uh, in the beginning, when I gave them the need, uh, established the need, there were dashboards that were developed by the Graziti team uh, on Tableau. And some of those dashboards did not really, they were like the, they were lying bar charts versus line charts or whatever it was they were not very easy to read so we had to basically um, tell them that okay this is not working this color scheme is not working so make it more like a dashboard which you can see within five seconds you can tell where your organization is going and similarly we had to work on other dashboards like the the adv dashboard which was the average daily visits now for folks we see monthly visits. Monthly visits only give us a snapshot of a month, but month might have 30 days, 28 days, whatever it is. And then we have to make sure that it is measured on a daily basis. So we had to basically educate them that this is what we really want, and then they were able to produce it. I think that's a great point, Karur. Um, actually, I wrote a white paper uh, about a year ago or so. So I've spent more than 20 years uh, in the analytics space. Before, you know, we used to kind of call ourselves data scientists and whatnot. 
we used to be all Excel jocks. Uh, this is way before Tableau came into picture. So we would have these large spreadsheets and we are doing all the data crunching. So one of the things which I kind of learned very early on in my career was know your audience. You know, put yourself in the shoes of your customers, your internal customers or external customers. Think what is it that they're trying to solve? You know, they, at the end of the day, Convert doesn't really care as much about, you know, the, the chart or the dashboard itself. What he really cares about is, is my organization healthy? Are we gonna meet our goals? Do we have enough money to cover all the investments that we have made? So if I put that hat that if I am convert and I have to make those decisions, what would I need? Unless I put as myself in those shoes, I will never be able to be successful and produce a product which is actually really useful to him. So, right? Go ahead. No, no, no. So uh, that's all good. But one thing that I totally forgot and just came to my mind is the trust. Dashboard means nothing if you cannot get the trust of the provider or the audience. So one of the things that happened in the beginning, and this is a funny story. So I tell him to produce a dashboard for me, which is looking nice, but guess what? It doesn't have the, it doesn't pass my straight face test as I call it. The visits were not aligned. They were like showing 75% of our visits, which I can say that our, our providers were doing that work. They should have produced those visits. And then there was a there was a check box. So basically that's where, you know, before we bring the, uh, they were able to check the boxes and get the right visit, it was able to be verified. And one of the persons sitting in the back, and I want to say, Anifa back there, she is one of our persons on the data analytics team from Lifelong, and she was able to verify the products. So thank you. And so that's important, the trust factor, which, before you even take it to the audience, whether it's your clinical people, the providers, they have only this much time span to look at the data. And if they don't trust it, you're done. So, Thank before you. we close, I wanted to say something. I was talking to Santi earlier, and he said to me, you know, Barry, I'd really love to learn more about the industry. And I'm going to put him on the spot here, if it's okay. And I said to him, well, there's ways you can learn about the industry. You can have great clients like Tenwa and this team, but said, I said to him, why don't you provide some proof of concept for the for free? Free, he, that's the key word. After, after, he, after he swallowed a couple of times, <laughs> he said, you know what, okay, if I, have, if I can meet an organization here during this presentation, or several of them, that have an issue, and it's something that I want to learn about, my organization wants to learn about, I'm willing to do that. So, as we conclude, if any of you have any interesting projects that you would like these people to attack for free, and if they charge you, just let me know. <laughs> for free, okay? They're willing to talk to you about that. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for spending time with the half hour with us today, and please give them a wonderful round of applause for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.